Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the JRPG Report. My name is Dalton Suter, and this is episode 248. I do apologize for the couple day delay. Um, <clears throat> had everything set to record Friday, had my articles pulled up and everything. Um, went to the bathroom, and while I was in the bathroom, the wonderful Florida storm that was happening uh, decided to knock my power out. So, yeah, but I'm here now. And unfortunately, it's probably going to be a shorter episode because in the past two weeks, there hasn't been a ton of info, but I'm hoping that there's enough good info to sate you all. And I hope you're having a wonderful week and weekend, depending on when you listen to this. So let's just dive right into it, shall we? With Neon Falcom has announced a Nintendo Switch port of the action RPG Tokyo Xanadu EX Plus, which I actually have on Steam, and it's quite fun. Uh, the game will release in Japan on June 26, 2023, and it will cost 5,280 JPY, which of course is Japanese yen, roughly $40 USD. Tokyo Xenadu EX Plus is an enhanced version of the original Vita game released in September of 2015. Some of the extras added in this version include a new playable character, new events, new costumes, and an additional story arc. The story of Tokyo Xenadu EX Plus is set in an alternate reality in which Tokyo suffered a great earthquake on 2005. Uh, it took nearly a decade for the city to recover from it. The protagonist is Ko Tokisaka, a high school student whose world changes after his encounter with the nightmare realm known as Eclipse. <clears throat> In other Neon Falcom news, in December 2022, the company announced that E's memoir, The Oath in Felgana, is an enhanced port of the original game, will release on the Nintendo Switch system as well. Tokyo Xanadu Plus is coming to Nintendo Switch in Japan on June 26, 2023. Um... And fingers crossed that it does get released over here as well. Like I said, I do know it's available over here on PC. But for all you Switch players, <clears throat> you know, hopefully, eventually this will come out here and you'll have another wonderful JRPG action game to go and check out because it is it is quite fun. So on March 17th, 2023, Koitecmo Europe announced via its Twitter account that it has shipped over 1.6 million copies of the Atelier Ryza series games. The milestone was marked with a short animation featuring the series heroines, and beginning in 2019, Atelier Ryza is the latest trilogy of games in the sprawling Atelier series that started in 1997. The original Ryza game would go on to be followed by two sequels, Atelier Ryza 2, The Lost Legends and The Secret Fairy, and Atelier Ryza 3, Alchemists of the End and The Secret Key. The Atelier series began life in 1997 with Atelier Marie, the alchemist of Salberg, for the original PlayStation, and would be followed by 20 four main series games man i should really dive into that i mean if a series is going to last 24 games um i'm going to assume that it's a pretty good series so especially if it's it, yeah i, I want to check this out these include a variety of sub series that typically follow the same protagonists and take place in the same world these include the iris and arlen series and the most recent series is secrets which Ryza and its sequels are a part of the series continues to this day with the release of Atelier Ryza 3, Alchemist of the End, and The Secret Key on March 24th, 2023. A remake of the very first game in the series, Atelier Marie Remake, The Alchemist of Salberg, is slated for release in July of 2023. You can play the first two Ryza games on the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and PC via Steam right now. Atelier Ryza 3 is currently set to release on March 24th, 2023 for Nintendo Switch, PC via Steam, the PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. And on the very, very same topic, Koi Tecmo, Gust, and Anaplex have announced the anime adaptation of the original Atelier Ryza, Ever Darkness, and the Secret Hideout game. And it will air in summer of 2023. So I just thought that that was cool. Uh, more information will be announced during... The Atelier Ryza 3, Alchemist of the End, and Secret Key launch an anime adaptation, AJ Special Stage. Whew, that was a mouthful. At Anime Japan 2023 Green Stage on March 20, or, yeah, March 26th from 11 to 11.35 JST. <clears throat> a second stage event, Atelier Ryza, the four, the four voice actors and the anime adaptation will be held at the Anaplex booth on the same date from 1 to 1.30 JST. So yeah, Atelier Ryza fans, uh, if you really liked that first game and you want to see how they do with the anime, yeah, keep your eyes out. Or if you want to watch the anime and if you if it you know is the cut of your jib, then go check the games out. <clears throat> so a short trailer for the Persona 
Phantom of the Night mobile game is available on the official Webio page. Or, excuse me, Weibo page. If you have a VPN, you must turn it on before accessing it. The page will not load if your VPN isn't active. Oh, excuse me, is active. It won't load if it is active. The trailer, which is almost four minutes long and available from Weibo or the official site, shows off the main characters and gameplay. For those who have played Persona 5 or Royal, a lot of the scenes are likely very familiar. It uses the same map of Tokyo, as well as many of the same assets from the game. We can see the main character, a girl named Arai, who sits in front of the protagonist, like Anne does, and a strange owl-like creature, like Morgana. The owl's name is Lufer, and like Morgana, he can transform into a car when they explore Mementos. Iwai will return as the weapons dealer, and there is a quick shot of Takami walking behind the main character. The story will center on immoral adults and the Persona users who enter their hearts to rehabilitate them. As well, the battle system will incorporate elements from Royal, such as Baton Pass. Beta testing for the game has opened up and will last until March 29th, 2023. Perfect World, the developer behind Persona Phantom of the Night, previously announced that it was working on a Persona-based mobile game in April 2021. Perfect World is a Chinese-based company known for its Perfect World series of MMORPGs and recently Tower of Fantasy. Persona Phantom of the Night appears to be one that you can play on its own, though. So keep an eye out for that. I'm kind of stoked about it. I mean, if they if it's not a whole, like, gotcha <clears throat> ridden system, I'm all for it. I will be down to check it out. So Compile Heart has released a teaser trailer for a new title to be announced in the March 23 due issue of Weekly Famitsu. The trailer opens <clears throat> with Neptune from the Neptunia series in front of the text Compile Heart Presents. Chibi character silhouettes, including Neptune, then appear as the text Compile Hearts Presents New Game Teaser, flash on screen, followed by office scenery, and finally, the circular vita of the four characters whose names and full portraits are not shown. And the only descriptions for these are, uh, number one is me, I'm confidential. I'm a wandering insect hunter who travels dimensions, and starting today, I'm the president of a game company. Number two, from now on, please call me And then it's redacted. Uh, Number three is, my name is redacted. Leave the calculations to me. Do the math. And then number four, I'm redacted. Oh, you can call me Hakase. So maybe a new Neptunia game coming? Or maybe not. Maybe it's a whole new series. I don't know. Maybe they're just using Neptunia uh, to promote it. I'm not sure. But I I really like the Compile Hard games. I'm not going to lie. They're good good games. They're not great, but they're good. And I like them a lot. So I, I don't know. I heartily recommend people to check out the Neptunia games. So, a Square Enix Games Epic Store ex- ex- my goodness that's hard to say. Take 2. A Square Enix Games Epic Games Store exclusivity is about to end. Oh, the company announced Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin is coming to PCs via Steam at the same time as a price drop across all platforms. The new price, which was originally 59.99, hasn't been announced as of 10 a.m. Eastern on March 16th, 2023, when this was written. However, the Steam version will debut on April 6th, 2023. I'm going to guess 49.99. Here is the official announcement, which is accompanied by a new trailer. And as a reminder, this is an alternate take on the original Final Fantasy story, with Jack and his allies setting off to defeat Chaos. Rather than a turn-based RPG, it is much more like a Souls-like. Jack is able to take on different classes to augment his abilities. Note that if you're unfamiliar with the game, there will be spoilers in the new video. Um, and I did retweet this if you'd like to check out the video yourself. Um, it doesn't mention the new Stranger of Paradise Origin price, though. So basically, the announcement just said Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origins launches on Steam April 6th. The game is also now available at a permanently discounted price. You've heard that chaos awaits, but are you ready for what trials you may face? See what perils will welcome you. Yeah, that's interesting. So Atlas is going to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Shin Megami Tensei with music outside Japan. It announced a special presentation will arrive in July 2023. When Anime Expo 2023 comes to Los Angeles, California, attendees can see the Shin Megami Tensei 30th live Band of Shadows concert at 8 p.m. Pacific time on July 1st, 2023 at the Novo. While the performance is affiliated with the Anime Expo, it will not be a free event. People who pay to attend the Anime Convention will be able to buy tickets for the July 1st, 2023. Atlas didn't note how much tickets will cost. However, a one-day Saturday ticket for the Anime Expo costs $80, and a four-day ticket is $165. 
There's also a music field trailer promoting the Anime Expo 2023 Shin Megami Tensei 30th Live Band of Shadows concert. Again, why are all these names so long? The performance will be two and a half hours long as it is expected to end at 1030 Pacific. And I got to say, the official art for the event looks pretty sweet. Always got to have Jack Frost in there. Always. In Japan, another Shin Megami Tensei anniversary event is planned on May 5th and 6th, 2023. Atlas will hold an event at the KT Zep Yokohama with an art exhibit, musical performances, and merchandise. The Anime Expo 2023 Shin Megami Tensei 30th Live Band of Shadows concert will be held on July 1st, 2023. Doors will open at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time ahead of the 8 p.m. performance. So Falcom has released new information and screenshots for Ease 10 Nordics detailing the combat systems and two playable characters of the newest entry in the Ease action RPG series. As revealed in the game's announcement in December 2022, Ease 10 changes things up from the recent entries in the series, no longer using the party system found from Ease 7 to Ease 9 Monster of Nox. Instead, Nordics looks to have only two playable characters. One is Adol Christian, of course. You have to have Adol. The other character shown in the screenshots is a young woman named Karya Valta. And the I did retweet this. The art style for these character portraits looks awesome. Uh, for those of you who do not know Adol Christian, uh, he is a rare adventurer who left behind more than 100 journals chronicling his adventures. He has a flaming red hair and clear eyes full of curiosity. He is said to have left Asteria, the place of his first adventure, at the age of 17 and headed for Sel- Selsetta. Or is it Calcutta? I, always, I think it's still Seta. One of his journals discovered his birthplace. He stopped at the Gulf of Oberia with the former thief Doji. And then this new character, Karya Valta. She is the only daughter of Grimson, the leader of the Balta Navy. She is feared as the pirate princess by local inhabitants who see her leading a band of maritime bandits to commit piracy. Although she has a delicate looking face, she is a fierce and brutal fighter wielding a hatchet and a round shield as is typical of a Norman pirate. The combat systems in Ease 9 Nordics is known as cross-action, which can either be played in a solo mode or combi mode. In solo mode, the player controls either Adol or Karya, while the other character will be automatically controlled by the AI. You can switch characters at the press of a button, and solo mode emphasizes speed-oriented combat with many dash movements. In this mode, switching between characters with proper timing can lead to consecutive attacks from your partner, leading into combos. In combi mode... The player controls Adol and Karya at the same time, accessed by pushing a button while in solo mode. In this mode, damage is increased significantly due to simultaneous attacks, but movement and speed are considerably reduced. However, guarding against enemy attacks in this mode will fill the revenge gauge, which will increase damage done by combi mode abilities. You can also repel against red-colored enemy attacks using the guard. Ease 10 Nordics is set to release for the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch in 2023 in Japan, and hopefully it will come out soon, but an English localization has not yet been announced. <clears throat> so Xseed Games and Marvelous Entertainment, or excuse me, Marvelous Europe, where did I get entertainment? My goodness. Have both announced that Rune Factory 3 Special will launch on September 5th. Originally announced for the Nintendo Switch last se- September, the Farming Sim Remaster will also be released for PC via Steam on the same date. Score. While the main additions of the special re-release were detailed back during last year's announcement, Marvelous Europe did provide some more details about the titles Physical Limited Edition and Digital Deluxe Edition for those east of the Atlantic. The Switch Limited Edition is available for pre-order for €59.99 Euros and inc- or it might be pounds. Either way, uh, and includes a 140-page notebook, stickers, pins, a patch, a custom box, and access to the in-game, quote, swimsuit mode. As for the Digital Deluxe Edition, it will run you $49.99 and will also allow access to the in-game swimsuit mode, quote-unquote. All pre-orders will also grant Riker's outfit from Rune Factory 5. After more than a decade following the original release on Nintendo DS, Rune Factory 3 Special returns on September 5th, 2023. The remastered version of this popular entry in the Rune Factory series begin is being developed with remastered HD graphics and redesigned 3D character models that improve upon the original design while taking their unique appeal. These improved visuals are bolstered by new features including newlywed mode, standalone adventurers, unlocked after marriage to each game, <clears throat> each of the game's 11 eligible bachelorettes, bachelor, bachelorettes. Ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, 
It has been a long couple months <laughs> and a hell difficulty uh, to challenge even veteran players. And like I said, I knew this was going to be a pretty short episode. It's probably going to clock in at like uh, with all the silence taken out. I don't know, maybe 10, 12 minutes. Uh, I do apologize for that, but I just there wasn't a ton out there. Um, if I missed anything, please point it out to me and I will cover it on the next episode. And I do apologize again for the delay. Um, but yeah, I do appreciate each and every single one of you for listening each and every time we put out an episode. And if you would like to check us out on social media, uh, facebook.com slash the JRPG report, uh, you can find us over on Twitter at JRPG report, and you can find me at super nerd Dalton. Uh, you want to donate to the Patreon. That'd be super cool. It, it helps out a lot. It helps me pay for my insurance to be completely honest. <laughs> uh, patreon.com slash JRPG report. It would mean the world to me. Uh, and if you, you know, if you want to get your, like you donate to the Patreon, you get your name, read out on each and every episode like these wonderful people jake w jordan k kularian and master loot thank you very very much you are very much appreciated if you would like to check out my other show you can check us out bi-weekly over on the steam machine podcast it's a bi-weekly pc gaming show where we play through my backlog of uh, way more games than i should than any person should ever own but i have on steam and uh, this this current game we're playing is No Man's Sky. So if you've ever been interested about that game or like you heard it was crap back in the day and you want to know how it how it is now, uh, give us a listen. Give us a listen. I think you'll be uh, I think you'll be intrigued. And so I hope each and every one of you have a wonderful week whenever you listen to this. Uh, again, thank you for putting up with the delays and things recently. Uh, work's just been very, very hectic and very, very stressful. And I'm uh, I'm doing my best to get these out to you guys as soon as I can. Thank you very, very much, and get back out there and level up.